Hey, what's going on people? So Liverpool have officially signed Fabio Carvalho earlier this week after initially missing out on the teenager on deadline day during the January transfer window. For those at Anfield excited about Harvey Elliott, you're in for a fucking treat because this fella has an even higher ceiling based on what I've seen thus far and that 5 million quid could very well be the bargain of the summer. He was wanted by the likes of Manchester United, Chelsea and Arsenal while at Croydon-based Ballam FC, but instead opted to sign for Fulham's academy, which has paid dividends and earned him a move after some truly outstanding performances in the championship. He finished the season with 11 goals and 8 assists in 38 appearances, a hell of a return given his tender years which played a big role in Fulham winning promotion back to the Premier League and landed him a place in the PFA Team of the Year. As you can probably tell by his name, the kid is Portuguese and arrived to England at the age of 10, unable to speak a word of the language. It's quite remarkable when you consider that was only as far back as 2013, as he's gone on to represent England's under 16s, 17s and 18s ever since. Unfortunately for the English FA, he's now decided to switch over to his native Portugal side given he doesn't have an English passport, which is a prerequisite to play at under 21 level and beyond, and could take quite a while to process. The coaching staff at Ballam recognized his potential immediately and one of them said Fabio fitted in brilliantly and was a class above everyone else. However, what seemed to impress those at the club more than his ability was his attitude towards the game. He didn't have a big-headed bone in his body, said his former manager. He was never like other kids who say, I'm gonna make it in the Premier League, I'm gonna do this or that. He had ambition but was the humblest kid you could ever meet, which is obviously something Liverpool have valued in recent years with stringent background checks taking place prior to sanctioning any incoming transfer. Although Liverpool are obviously a terrific side and have been competing for top honours these last few years, they've also been crying out for a bit of creativity in midfield to provide a spark and help take some of the goal-scoring burden off the front three. That's where Carvalho comes in, who might strike some as a Coutinho regen based not only on the way he plays but also that goddamn smile. While people have suggested that he could be an understudy to Salah for that wide right attacking position, I firmly believe he's best utilised as a central attacking midfielder and will likely make that position his own in years to come. That being said, youngsters are rarely played in the spine of a side by Premier League managers given the responsibility it brings, so he could very well start off on the wing. For Fulham, Marco Silva favoured either a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 formation, in which Carvalho featured as an advanced 8 or a 10 respectively, drifting into the left channel when in possession. In addition to finding the back of the net, Carvalho is just as adept at creating chances, which makes for a unique combination given players generally excel at one aspect or another. In fact, his expected assists in open play was the highest in the entire league last season. Furthermore, in what will be music to the ears of Klopp's rock and roll setup, Carvalho works his bollocks off to retrieve possession and looks to press opposition defenders from first minute to last, which on paper means he'll fit into Liverpool's current side like a glove. Now, unlike most number 10s who insist on the game revolving around them in order to perform at their highest level, Carvalho doesn't demand that the ball be at his feet at all times. In fact, former Liverpool man Harry Wilson as well as teammates Tom Kearney and Alexander Mitrovic are more involved in build-up, as shown by the graphic on screen. When in possession, Carvalho's quality of actions tend to be extremely high. Conversely, when out of it, he's often making bold off-the-ball runs into areas which help open up space for teammates and is something which is difficult to quantify with pure statistics. Although there's an element of directness to Carvalho's game, it's his quick feet and agility that make him stand out rather than raw pace, which is an area in which he lacks in comparison to some of his compatriots. This works out well for Liverpool though, who are more often than not attempting to break down teams with long spells of possession rather than hitting them on the break as they're too busy parking the bus to be caught out in transition. Don't expect to see Carvalho swing in across or thread an eye of the needle pass, but do be prepared for some clever movement and intelligent cutbacks to unmarked teammates. Overall, as much as it pains me to say it, this boy has world-class potential and I fully expect him to become a household name in the footballing world after learning from teammates who are already the best in the game and a manager who is one of the greatest the English top flight has ever seen. He's already got a goal against Manchester City to his name that to a mere five days after seeing his move to Liverpool in January fall apart, which showcases great mental fortitude and those in red will be hoping it's the first of many. Standing at 5 foot 8, it might take a while for Carvalho to become accustomed to the physicality of the Premier League, but he has plenty of others to look up to for inspiration in that regard and will likely fill out his body in due course. I'm disappointed not to see him stick around at Fulham given he would have likely started week in week out, but contrary to popular opinion, he's going to be under far less pressure for a side with an established 11 looking to compete for silverware as he can focus on his own development as opposed to a club who are fighting tooth and nail for survival and would have been expecting him to deliver what previous Fulham sides have failed in recent times, which is to stay up.
While Liverpool haven't been extravagant in the market since winning the league in 2020, they're acutely aware of the fact that they have a reliable core which requires only a couple of additions with a high ceiling to help them in the short to medium term before potentially turning into superstars themselves in the long run. Cheers for tuning in guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Fulham were an absolute treat to watch last season and I hope they continue more of the same in the Prem. And if you're new to this channel, I suggest you check out my video on Darwin Nunez, which is on the top right hand corner of your screen. You could also go back two or three months via my channel pages to see my video on Luis Diaz, just to double check whether or not I'm talking out of my ass, given we've all seen him play now. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Take care and have a great weekend. Peace.